Star Trek 57, M23, take two. Star Trek Podcast. Vendome got a field promotion and it's stuck. What? But, 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 but he's a goofball. Vendome's a guy who gets hit with a spear on away missions. Well, that goofball breezed up the ranks. Uh, completing a meteoric rise to captain. I can't believe this. Every single thing I do is calculated to help me make captain one day, and this guy just lucks into it. I say it was luck, Vindom was always saying yes to new opportunities. He volunteered for any mission he could, good or bad. Now look at him. Tendi, it's not that easy. I can't just go jumping into things without knowing the risks. Warrior, you discover a shortcut through the caves of Drakmore. Do you enter the darkness? Pfft, no way. I'm not trying to get cave killed. I'll stay on the path. Ah! Ambush my house, Stromach! You beg for your life like a Baynock! And live out the rest of your days not as a warrior, but as a dentist! Ouch! Oh, man. I really love that song. It's so silly. Okay. It's that is silly. It's a ridiculous song, but it's something it's... Wake me up before you go-go. Wake me up okay. before you go-go. Can we start the podcast? Oh, now I you're we, I thought we had started the podcast. No, we're, we're going to start it now. <laughs> okay. We're, we're going to start it now. <laughs> Dan's just going to keep coughing. He's going to do this. Because we had some stuff going there. It was pretty good. Leo Lom go lucky loo. Leo Lom go lucky loo. What is that? You're done with the vocal business. Leo Lom go lucky loo. No, I'm doing mouth stretches now. Don't do it. Leo Lom go loopy loo. You're hurting my ears with this. This is a problem. Um, <laughs> this is the It's Got Star Trek podcast. It is which episode, friends? It's season Damn. three, Jesse? episode I don't, two. I'm not keeping track. No, which episode of the podcast? It's the least dangerous game. No, which episode of the podcast? I don't, I 148. Don't Very good. 148. I, did it. I think that was the first time I've ever gotten it right. Good job, Dan. Okay, so it's episode 148 of the podcast. I'm and yes, up. we are going to be doing Lower Decks Season 3, Episode 2, uh, The Least Dangerous Game, which is, of course, a takeoff of the that old tale from, I think, uh, 1926, Whoa. The Most Dangerous Game, in Whoa. which case a man gets shipwrecked on an island and gets hunted by a rich uh, Russian fella. I think, there's I think a te- that there was a Conan that was like that. Too. That story, variations on that story have appeared in many places, I, uh, in media since. Well, apparently there's a show that has Liam Hemsworth, Hemsworth and Christopher Christoph Waltz. Wow, Is that a version of that story? According to IMDb, there's the most dangerous IMDb's, games. Uh, a, there's a TV series um, from 2020 on, and it's got whoa. Zach Cherry, who was, uh, he plays that Mark guy Cherry. that's always kind of like, kind of nerdy. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. You'd have I'm to look him start up. It. Hold on. You know what people love on podcasts? Zach Cherry. This is this ASMR business. Uh, you know? People love that's, food that's on crinkly. podcasts. What kind of crinkling is that? They love coughing. They, they love, love coughing, food. coughing while you're crinkling Man, food. That's some this delicious. Is, this is crinkling. how we've gotten so popular. All right. So you'll have to pardon me just because I need a little They don't bit like of, it when you're vaping for some reason. That dude I, was I took a little too much podcasting medicine before we started, so. Uh, oh, you got that podcast? In this? Uh, I took a little too much. So I'm going to have a Violet Crumble. You all know what a Violet oh, Crumble word. is? Oh, uh, Those are delicious. Yeah, it's yes. magic foreign, <laughs> foreign, I, I, <laughs> out, outside we're, of the context We're, we're of the talking United to the world States. now. I and, quite like those. Through the internet, there is no foreign. Delicious shattering candy. The only candy. foreign is anyone off the grid. Hold on. I just need a quick bite of this. Then we can get into the conversation Jeez, properly. Flip. Oh, yeah. You can hear it. Go. Oh, my God. Oh, go. No gob. No my gob. I'm sorry. I need some fucking chocolate. It's tough. It's better tough business. Better I tell you to talk when you're smoking. You sound like this when you're talking with a mouthful. Where, where do you get that, Jinx? Uh, you get know. at the fancy candy store at the mall. Eat the candy. Oh, please. And then you sound a, like Randy a, Savage. It's a sometimes treat because it's just right. like five bucks or something. Yeah, right. Yeah. Oh, five yeah. American dollars. Oh, yeah, brother. Do they have that oh, world, yeah. world market? I don't know if they have it at World Market. World Market is good, but they they might not be sophisticated enough for the old uh, Violet Crumble. Let me tell you one thing, dude. <laughs> let me tell you one. 
Are Hulk. you doing Randy Savage? Well, that was sort of mixing it with Hulk Hogan a little yeah, bit. Yeah, it was a bit yeah. of the Hulk. Randy Randy's Savage own. sounds more like he, he's constipated He died of a heart attack, didn't he? I think so. Yeah, he sounds like he's got he just got to push out a poop Randy at Savage? all times. Randy Savage, I have a heart attack. He, he, he's trying to push out a poop. I'm Randy Savage. <laughs> or the Hulk does. Oh. Okay. The Hulk's no. alive, brother. <laughs> well, that's what I thought. It's my died. You there are, me. You just don't hear about him. There anymore. are other podcasts which are much more capable. I snapped discussing... into one too many Slim Jims. Oh, <laughs> yeah, and I died. Wrestling. All yeah, right. Yeah, right. So, um, Star Trek. Star May rest Trek. in peace. I always like Randy Savage. I do, too. Amazing. Uh, Star Trek uh, Lower Decks. Another, <laughs> another good episode. It's always so tricky. It's more fun when the episodes are all super shitty or mm. goofy. Yeah. Uh, this was a really funny episode. There was all sorts of- It was really good. Lots mm-hmm. of funny stuff. It was really good. I don't have a particular outline for what we're going to discuss today. I figured, why don't we just dive in and just start chatting about what we liked? I think we all we all liked this episode, right? We all thought it was pretty good. What did you think, Dan? Was it good? I was a okay in my book. I was a big fan. All right. What were some of the the things that jumped out at you? <laughs> Preferably something that is uh, a sort of a unique perspective, uh, entertainingly <laughs> mm. conveyed. Oh man! Ideally, mm. given the context of this whole podcast what is he thing, he's a flip. I'm just saying, any points that you might make. What if given, you were going to make different points? Given the option, I I would personally prefer that they <laughs> highly entertaining and also incredibly insightful. <laughs> Can they just be thought provoking? Thought provoking is fine. That's a very good option. If mm. that's the best option among multiple options, that's that's a good option. Well, this isn't thought provoking, but it's a question. Is the Ferengi Ferengi uh, Ferengi ta- black market black tax. market tax? That's a real thing. Is that from DS Nine? Yeah, or that, that's from. There's the- a lot of DS Nine in this episode. Yeah, and you know we're not we're not going to give too many spoilers from Deep Space Nine, but at at a certain point in Deep Space Nine, there is a um, there's a, some reforms applied to the Ferengi business that still lets them be Ferengi, but with a little less awfulness, right? So yeah, I think that is a reference to that. It's really that funny, thing. the idea of taxing the, the black market. It's hilarious. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it's brilliant. <laughs> it, it is. Um, Ransom, the whole time, it it was, it kind of threw me off because the whole Ransom, like um, uh, him being, uh, what's the word when you're not, when you're in, the whole Ransom sort of like doofy, incompetent kind of like what what was he? He kept saying like it's not a space elevator. It's a it's a blah 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 Orbital lift. Yeah, and he's like, I'm not blah blah blah. He did he did that somewhere else too. It was uh he said uh he said uh it's not a space elevator. And he goes, I'm not fumbling, you know. And he's he's acting like yeah. this doofy doof doof. And he's putting on this well, mission because he's not an engineer, right? Well, so he's putting on putting him on this mission, right? That is totally stupid, right? Because why would you put send engineers to do the work of like uh, politics and right. vice versa? And so what I was thinking, I was thinking like, oh, he's doing, he's making us think he's stupid because he's actually doing something where he's trying to, because it was such a softball mission they were handed. I was like, oh, well, he must secretly be trying to like make them switch places just to like put them out of their comfort zone since it's like a, an easy mission. It certainly and was sort of semi portrayed that way. It was semi portrayed that yeah. way because it was a little different because, and, and what was funny is because there was no secret reveal where he was like, actually this whole time i was doing that on purpose and what he did is he's like okay you got me i was just trying to piss you off so it was kind of along the same lines as you know um um doing some complicated switcheroo place but um but it really he was just trying to piss her off and it was never like kind of revealed that he did this in sort of this climactic way it's sort of like when everything fell apart that's when he's like okay okay i was doing that so um it and I like that. Um, I like that because I I'm glad that it wasn't a straightforward. Just like he's totally dumb, and that's that's all there is yeah. to the episode. I'm not glad, but I'm also glad that I was wasn't able to sort of predict the way in which there our expectations were going to be subverted. But they were only subverted slightly because he was still portrayed as this sort of doofy. Uh, I'm using the word doofy or not. You I, are I using the word doofy quite I get, a bit. Kind of, I know. He's kind of doofy. I, I don't know what, how else to describe a ransom. It all it all fits but in, like, though. It, but, it, but it still shows that he is kind of like bumbling and stuff like that. But he does have some kind of plan, I guess, or it, something. It, 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 it does all fit in, though, with the uh, characterization of not just ransom, but most of the characters we meet on the Cerritos. Not all, but most of them. They're all highly competent, but also have significant flaws those flaws are what differentiate them from the crew of the 
flagship of the Federation, of the flagship of Starfleet, the right? Yeah, it's like the Enterprise. It's we're, not the Enterprise. We're used to people who are hyper competent even along most dimensions, almost to the point where they have they they don't have sufficient flaws, right, mm. to make them interesting. And then other shows found different ways of introducing, you know, Deep Space Nine had lots of different alien characters and stuff. Voyager was able to stave that off. The Voyager was still super competent, but there's the Maquis. They had gross face aliens. And they were, and they, yeah, the, they did. <laughs> I don't know if you're referring to the Kazon or Neelix. Um, <laughs> like just about everybody in the Delta <laughs> Quadrant has like some Delta Quadrant gross like face. That, 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 the clown episode Wait, with Michael McKean. <laughs> was it the Kazon the one that had the feather hair? They or? had the crazy hair. Yeah. It apparently took forever to do. But. Returning to my point, yes. On the Zoritos, back at the K Ranch, as we've discussed in the <laughs> the K Ranch, is that like the, where they grow ketamine? Cranch, <laughs> or Cranch. Just, Jesse got it. Do? Oh, okay, okay. I see. You know that's, from the, that's from I the. I feel the, really, You watch it with the captions. Then the captions. I, I watch it's, it really it's, silly. Uh, it's K apostrophe. Right. right. I don't watch it with the captions. I do it in the second I'm time. I'm old school. No, the first time I watch it just. Straight up, and then the second time I Both put the times, captions on. If no I watch caption. it on my phone, and I get the caption. He's so old school that he watches the intro every single time. I generally do watch the intro. I generally every do time. as well, but I didn't this time. I mean, I I, I skipped it. I I'm, like the skip function sometimes. But anyway, mm. like, point point is basically conveyed and concluded that the uh, a reminder. And this remind. episode helps remind us that, you know, Mariner, Captain Freeman, uh, Ransom, they're, they are competent. All of them are competent, mm -hmm. but they have these other flaws that hold them back a little bit. Or or if, if you don't want to use the term hold them back, you can say whatever, guide them in a different direction than being at the quote unquote top of the fleet. Top. And I like, I like... I think it was a really good idea to set it up so that Mariner was going to be paired with. We rent, ma mentioned this kind of already, but it's working out well already. Yeah, that from the, the, this is a continuation from the first episode. Where, yeah, where we, she's now under the wing, basically. And our, the first introduction oh, we had Ransom. to that was uh, in season one. When was it like the episode two or something where they went or something where they went to the planet and yeah. there was that one where they're like it was like the combat thing. Yeah, where where, yeah. Ransom, where they where they were fighting each other to see who got yeah. to fight right. the big monster troll. And fella. so that's what right. And so that's and in that one, Ransom also. He was, also, yeah, he he was also being shitty like to Mariner in that episode. Right. And then Mariner was, was surprised by his comp his surprising he was surprised by his confidence. So they kind of laid the groundwork there, but that they're going to going more into it. It does two things. Like one, it gets us to know Ransom more, which is which is kind of fun because I've always wanted to sort of see have a reason to see more of him. Yeah. And two, it does hey, it you did see more of him. Do you know what you saw of him? His nipples, his lava, lava tubes. tubes, lava tubes. Which, That's right. and please, audience, please forgive me. Please forgive me. And write into feedback at it's got oh, to say something perverted. It's not perverted. I I'm not going to call it perverted. I'm just saying when they when they made that comment at the end, I forget who it was. One of those people were talking about like, look at his lava tubes. The Delanians. I have to presume. And again, forgive oh, me. Oh, it was audience. the baby. Forgive me, audience. I have to presume the intention <laughs> of the writers baby. was they they were saying lava tubes, Sedgy but in our baby. minds they wanted us to think the term cum gutters. What? Right, exactly. And apologies to the audience again, but I cum never, gutters is a colloquial term. Dan has never heard that. I've never heard the term cum gutters. <laughs> Are you serious? I've never, never heard, heard the term, term cum gutters. My word. Wow. I, I, so I never made I that connection. I think you got to get to the gym there, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> Develop yourself some 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 sexy lava tubes. Oh man. I don't like that term personally. I do not Cum mind gutters. Yeah, I don't mind no, if other I don't people like the sound use it. Yeah. To me, is it supposed to be your like your 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 the, the vas deferens? No, it's the abs. <laughs> it's not the literal it's, oh. and, the, and the lines to the oh, it's not you know, the it's the not muscle the, definition in the top of okay. the legs. anatomically the cum gutters. Yeah. Oh, I see that. So it's not the actual right, like you just said. Yeah, it's not the actual gutters they go through. It's where yeah. you put the put the fallout. It's like where done. the la the lava tube. Yeah, and it, and it creep, the lava creeps tubes down and the rivulets of lava. Okay, wow, you or know you're, other stuff i'm totally gonna be on board with you Again, with that one that makes sense <laughs> apologies to the audience but no i I, I, I do believe i do believe that I this believe. this was the intention of the writers and if so the writers kudos to them the writers were writing out cum gutters all right i, I apologize <laughs> i apologize for for uh interjecting in no the that was a, that was a point. good interjection um oh yeah the next uh 
I was going to say the next thing is because you were just talking about how each character has, you know, they're, they're competent, but they have their flaws. And so this is one of those fun situations where you put two characters together where their flaws, they're both competent in different ways and they're flawed in different ways. They complement each other in this way that's really causes a lot of friction, though, mm-hmm. you know. So you wonder if there has to be some kind of relationship. It, it would seem like it would be more likely Mariner and Ransom. Well, I, but I, it doesn't even mean there has to be one. But I'm just trying to think, like, if shows tend to pair people up at some point. So I'm just trying to figure out who are they going to pair up first. Well, and, you know? My, and Michael McMahon... Or Mike McMahon. Maybe. I think he goes by Mike, not Michael. Vince McMahon. He's here. probably one of those fellas that uh Welcome to the WWF. I'm Vince McMahon. I think I think most people What's in, up, dude? in the Western Hemisphere certainly uh, uh have That's probably weird. known somebody uh named Mike or Michael. Or McMahon. And if you have they probably are oh. are really serious about which one they prefer to be called, Mike mm. or Michael. I, that's been my experience. Or Mikhail. One or the other is expected. Usually they are not considered when, interchangeable. When the Sega Genesis, I had Michael Jackson's Moonwalker. and when you, you mean s- Mike Jackson? See that in the key in the when you grass you to kid, the kid would turn around and goes, wait, 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 wait. What was this game about? This is game. <laughs> wait, get back up. Sorry, I know this is a Star Trek podcast. Moonwalker. But I gotta understand. You never played Michael Jackson's Moonwalker for the Sega Genesis. Oh, that's, well, in the it, does he save kids in the video too? In the I yeah, oh, it was yeah. A lot of he starts he starts around. he starts that fight in the in the in Moonwalker. The, in the bar. Yeah, yeah. I think because the game is based on that He's short. Got them hook shoes, and he, he saves kids. But this video game those hook shoes. This video to, game, not to moonwalk, but to do the lean. This video game is all about him like dancing his way through through levels to rescue kids. And he just snatches kids along the way. Well, well there's kids behind doors, there's kids behind graves, there's all these kids everywhere. And you have to like find them. <laughs> I did not know about this game. That was another level where you're like going through a cemetery and you're finding kids hidden behind okay. graves. And so anyway, so when they popped out, they'd go, Michael. Michael. They didn't yeah, say Mike. Of course not. So it wasn't Mike Jackson. Yeah. Well, so Mike McMahon has explained in interviews that uh uh he does not they do not the writers do not intend to pair up at least our main characters uh tendy rutherford uh mariner boimler he 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 said for him him um star trek's not uh about romantic relationships it's about a bunch of professionals (laughs) getting into adventure but you think about like but the whole diana troy wharf Riker thing which many people think aspects of those are flawed at and, least the wharf or and, 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 and what about the wharf and, and double jack double 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 a lot of people have double jacks about that but the point being there that wasn't a dub- I mean, star he wasn't trek double jack and we all know that janeway and chakotay made made baby juice on that when they were stuck <laughs> on that planet <laughs> his lava or tunes. janeway and yeah. the other dude when they were lizards well that was that was straight yeah. up sex but when Jane Ro- paris but janeway and and chakotay um, they were on a planet for okay. a while together, and All so right. and so you know they were doing something. So this point is getting away from me a little bit, but I, if I am, I am not <laughs> Mike McMahon. I do you. not have the pleasure of being or knowing Mike McMahon. However, if I were to interpret his statements, I think what he means to say is that the the focus of Star Trek has never been uh, romance, and that right. where well. romance is included, it is for. It, at least, hopefully, good character and plot reasons, but not always. Sometimes, that's which is why often those romances were critiqued if they lasted more than an episode. And that's why I don't want to go into this being like, "Oh, who's going to pair up?" I don't want to start assuming but, who's going to pair up. But it tends but to I don't happen. Think, so I, don't, I don't think this. Is, I'm, I agree with you because I don't think that excludes other pairings up. Right? We've already seen Mariner pairing up at least a little bit with Jennifer. Right? Jennifer. So, Jennifer. And and Boimler had Jennifer his girlfriend. Jennifer was a red shirt. Ben, I, I can't remember the name of uh, Boimler's girlfriend, uh, who right. Mariner thought was a oh, psychic yeah. monster or whatever. Uh, but the point being is, is she had that, like, that was bug played, in her head. That was played by Jillian Jacobs. Gillian, Gillian Jacobs. It's pronounced Jillian. It's pronounced Gillian. It's pronounced Jillian. G- okay. I think she's going to get mad at you if it's you say it. We're gonna Jillian. Get, we're going to get comments now. Yeah, and we will deserve them, and all of them are going yeah. to damn. I know. I shouldn't be. What is it called when you when you don't call people by the name they want to be called? There's actually a term for that. Mean, it's called being a piece of shit. You get ostracized. That's <laughs> it's what it's like called. you're a fucking dickhead. I remember. No, look. I remembered her name was not as I would have expected it to be, and I would have expected it to be Gillian, so I chose Jillian because I was that's like, because you're an iconoclast, Ooh. and that's that has failed you in this what? instance. <laughs> it's failed wow. in, in this particular I think, instance. I think, I think what wow. happened is your default position is to think the ridiculous thing. 
thing. Well, yeah, I think. Well, I think well, it's ha- what but happens. Actually, the ridiculous well, thing is the real thing. It's what happens a, a lot where I'm like, okay, it's the one you never guess that it's going to be, but I already know it's not the old one. I know it's the new one, so the one I was gu- guessed it was going to be was going to be right because I already knew I had Dan to guess. Dan was tricking. Dan. So <laughs> it's kind of like Dan's, a, Dan's getting into his uh, vaudeville mode. So well, that's so. <laughs> So it's kind of like that scene in the prin- in the Princess Bride where he's like, I know I can't drink the one in front of you because you know, he's like, I know that you know that I know that you know that it's Gillian. That's a good impression you know? of, of Wesley, a.k.a. the man in black. I know that you know, mm-hmm. or, or were you being Vicini? Wallace Shawn, a.k.a. Grand Negus Zek. I'm bringing it back to Star Trek is what I'm doing. Oh, yeah. Okay. Anyway, mm. we had. Some... What was his character's name in 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 uh, Princess Bride? Vizzini. Vizzini. Right. Yeah. He's but in then that King was... of the Hill episode. But then there was that other guy. Yeah, he's but... great in that episode. No. But he's then great in everything. There's that other. Ep... He's in Clueless. He's fantastic in Clueless. There's and that... Clueless is a fantastic movie. There's it's that a fantastic m- version of that uh, story. There's a non a non him person that says, "I know that you know that I know <laughs> that you know." Uh, some... Robert De Niro in something. <laughs> it's one of those I'm old g- school. That. It's like some Abbott and Costello kind of thing or something. I don't know. Okay. Anyways, well, you don't. But, clearly, you do not. But yes, I was. I was mixing them both together. But I was doing the thing where I was second guessing my. I was triple guessing, then quadruple guessing because I kept expecting the other thing to have already guessed that I got it wrong in the first right. place. So I re- dude, you are. We have lost you the plot are. here. Okay, okay. Gillian, um, Jennifer. That doesn't even. It's not even relevant. All I was doing is you're talking about Jennifer. I agree with you. Jennifer was we had a Jennifer had a thing with Mariner. Yeah, with the caveat that the side we, can, we can be fairly confident that we're not going to see much romantic entanglement between our four core characters, at least according to the producers. No, and I wouldn't. Expect that doesn't that prevent all sorts of uh, interesting, hopefully interesting, hopefully well founded within the characterizations of these these folks we know uh, relationships with other people either one-offs in an episode or some some longer term thing i just don't want anyone to think that i'm all like romantic comedy crazy or something like that i don't, I don't think anybody thinks i don't that. think that i think that. we're i think we're safe. it's very important for me we we that people that. that people i don't want people to think of me as, as a certain way i want them to not think of me as a certain way all right so that's yeah what you should do then is make sure you're very clear provide as much detail as possible that's what i do yes exactly (laughs) just be very very double check you know you should write blog posts i don't know why you don't write follow-up blog posts to further you know explore points i always i always get embarrassed of what i write so i I was always deleting it all right i because i I repeat myself a lot because i try to explain my point yeah but you could edit that out edit it out (laughs) Can, that's the cool part about writing shit down. You can take it yeah, out. But I've also out. got I also have a pack rat mentality, so I'll be like, every word is important, you know. If well, I just get over that. That's well, nuts, dude. Get over that. That's yeah. that, that if it were that easy, we'd all I'll help you. We'd all be breezy and cheesy. You know what you I mean? Send me the writing and you I'll, don't, you I'll don't need that put many the red words. lines on it. I'll be like doot 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 and I'll put like little comments if it was, on it. He's gonna say too many words. If it was, many, it's like in uh, Amadeus when the William when, Faulkner. you know the 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 Archduke was like too many notes. You know, when, Salieri yes, I was all that. like, "Hey, there's too many fucking notes in this shit." This and Mozart guy, what's it? What's up with all silly. these fucking notes? There was some story about like I think it was either Paul McCartney or or someone was playing bass with someone. They just said like, "Don't play too many notes" or something like that. But that's like bass players You're just not. It was some Beatles story or Paul McCartney story or something. Somebody coming on board and someone saying to something else, someone was going to play the bass and the person said to that person, just don't play too many notes. Oh, look, like when I'm, they got like Stu Sutcliffe How about this? Or whatever. How about Maybe. this? Look, look, What's the next point look, about Star Trek? Look, I'm just saying it's- Lower it's, Decks, season three, episode two. It, it, like what you were saying, just don't be that way. If it were that easy, we'd all be breezy and cheesy. All right. So Star, I, uh, Star Trek. I always like oh, it when Jesse's there's- Jesse's coming in with a point. That's when excellent. there's Klingon-based jokes. Yes. And, and when there's like, when it, and it's part of like in-world pop culture. I, I really, that's, you know, one of my favorite bits when they, it happens, it seems to happen a lot in uh, Lower Decks. There's lots of Klingon jokes. I, I regret that I cannot remember the user's name, but I there was a very interesting comment on Reddit where they noted that- um, one thing that's interesting about Lower Decks is because we're not seeing the elite people on the crazy super missions, we're seeing a lot more interaction with pop culture, the contemporary pop culture of the 24th century, right? It's not that we were devoid of it 
in other series, but it was usually just hinted at. And our officers were not able to, you know, the main characters usually were not able to do, you know, whatever. Um, yeah. We're seeing a lot more of this. In, They're lamos. This in-universe, like the Zebulon sisters is a great example and various stuff that happens at the right. star bases they go Klingon, to. Th- there's a lot. There's, they're, they're talking about Klingon music in one episode. There's, there's yeah. some episode where there, there's Klingon like punk a, rock. There's that Klingon acid punk, punk, punk acid band. Punk. It was yeah. a, that, Klingon that, acid punk. That's that, right. It translates to like sex phasers or something. <laughs> like whatever sex that, pistols. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, the board, the game they were playing was called Bath Batliths and Bin Binux. Yeah, right. B- which is coward cowards. Yeah, yeah Klingon. Bi- is it pronounced Binux or Binux? Binux. Bi- I don't know. Like I was. I, yeah. And then there I was some. There were some letters below that that I just couldn't understand what, what was going on there. That was just straight up in Klingon. <laughs> oh, and the the idea that you you know um, they've got Martok voiced by the original actor. Yeah, Hertzler. Uh, yeah, J J Hertzler. J G Hertzler. He grew up around. Our area. It hurts Lurs so good. Oh, he grew up in the uh, yeah. in the Washington in the, DC in the Washington DC area. area. Yeah. Uh, uh, JG Herzler had already been on Lower Decks playing a different character. He was playing one of those alien captains. Oh, that's right. Does Earlier. he play Cranch too? Uh, no, that's uh, Jay North. Uh, or it's maybe not. is it Jay North? You know that he's a prominent voice actor. It, 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 it makes sense that they, you know, the Ferengi, I guess, would would try to. Yeah, have a knockoff. No, have a knockoff of yeah. of his voice. But it's funny thinking the the idea of thinking like Ferengi's like imitating Martok and and Gowron. Well, they probably did it with a computer <laughs> so algorithm. He's trying to get the Gowron yeah. expansion. But it, yes, it's important to note for those. Oh, that's who, right. They who had. Aware. There was that DS Nine episode where they could just recreate voices with computer uh, with yeah. algorithms. Nah, I mean, we can do it. We can just do it today. It's yeah, a yeah, fake. yeah. <laughs> Is that the, it's a fake. Yeah. It's a fake. Right. Yeah. That was. That was. That was. That was. Yeah. That was. Um. Play. Uh. Not play. Uh. uh Spir- spiralizing, uh, what's it called when <laughs> spiralize? <laughs> you know what when you about? when um, when you make something up that's fake and you, you like fa- the, the word you just made up. I <laughs> mean, spurious. Sp- no, I was thinking like when you fabricate. Yeah, well, they didn't fabricate like that's not the word I'm looking for. But instead of doing audio, which they can do, they they did a whole. You're holo- looking for words that don't exist. They they look. They did a whole holodeck. Oh, recre- I get you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you were right the first time. Spiralize. <laughs> 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 but the the mm-hmm. game is fun but the we do need to point out that this is commenting and and sort of parodying a real life Star Trek VCR based game, right? Yeah. So back in the olden days, I guess oh, we got to start first. Those are miserable. There used to be a thing <laughs> called a, a VCR and that you could play video cassettes and you could also record There was a whole video war cassettes. between movies. There was a whole uh, war between two standards. Now we have wars with all standards, but back then the VCR versus Betamax uh, war was like was for real. And VCRs, there were the VCR games. I actually had one that was a murder mystery game. It had a board and everything thing and i had this little um uh button you pushed that would make some sounds but then you push the vcr and you would have to it would depending on which choice you make made the the vc the game would be like all right fast forward one minute oh, <laughs> no. and then you have to like be like blah, 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 blah. that's uh, hilarious it was hilarious and so there was a star trek game that had this and it, and it had Robert O'Reilly. He wasn't playing Gowron. He was playing a very Gowron like Klingon. You can find clips of this on YouTube. And so this is mimicking that. It's mimicking Dungeons and Dragons. It's mi- mimicking the other various um, sort of hex based you know, you know, role playing uh, games. Those hex. The first hex based based game I played was BattleTech. I remember that was a lot of fun. But I, I the video the VCR game I played was some game where you were like flying around in this dogfight and you were supposed to aim the gun at the screen and shoot it. But it wasn't like a normal video game where if you hit someone they you know fell down because it's a vcr what it would do is the screen would go blank for like a frame and they would put like a red dot over the thing so the vi- the, the thing wasn't actually changing yeah. it would just blank out the screen and put a red dot to where you shot to like make it so 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 it wouldn't register your hit you'd have to be like ah, i got it you know and, then <laughs> just, and they actually did uh, back ridiculous. in the 90s have a a video they made a video D D thing oh i, I bet it was super when they super um, um campy and I don't, shitty. I don't think I, I don't believe i ever saw it but i think it i think it was more, more like it may have been on a disc i think uh well if it's well, a disc it was no maybe not worse. no i think i think it was i think, it, I think, it, was, again, I think yeah. it was still i think it was still vcr actually I wow. think it was still vcr regardless this anyway. is this whole this little game thing this little game mechanic thing uh not game mechanic, this this use of this klingon game had 
just so much wrapped into just such a brief amount of thing. It was just so yeah. much wonderfulness, a great way to book in the, the episode and to also in a low stakes way, generate some of this conversation between Boimler mm-hmm. and Tendi about, but Tendi's just saying, why don't you try new things? And of course, Boimler takes it way too far. Right. And this is the only episode where they're, they are paired together like that. And, and then, yeah, and I then guess like Mariner and Rutherford are sort of, on the other side. Semi-paired story. together. Right. It's the sort of classic scenario of like, you got this uptight person who, by the way, I can relate to Boimler in that. I need like at least three days notice before I can go hanging out with someone, which is in stark contrast to high school where I was trying to like look for any chance I got to leave the house at a moment's notice. Yeah, right. But now, not three days is an exaggeration, but I, it's hard for me to, to like, someone's it's like- It's not an exaggeration for me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> it might be underestimating. <laughs> well, in any case, we will just, we will talk about that another time. We'll talk about that off air. We're on air right now. <laughs> off vi- off feed. Um, whatever. Uh, but uh, what was I saying? Oh yeah, I was talking about. So it's it's it, this idea of being more um spontaneous yeah. is is definitely something I can relate to. But yeah, like like you said, he, he does the whole. And this is a sort of classic where he's like, okay, I'm super organized. Now I'm going to be organized about not yes. being organized, you know? And because then Tendi, Boimler takes everything to the and max. And then Tendi's just like, or just moderate, and, you know? It doesn't <laughs> have to be, it's like, little. don't make yourself a prey to this fucking v- Vantex or Van, what was it? I cranch. Mean, cranch, but a Cranch was, there was a certain type of, um, I'm going to look it up. Oh, yeah. The, the, I Captain forgot, oh, Bendo. I forget the name of the people. The subsoidal. Subswibalize? How about this? Uh, let's take a quick break. And Ooh. when we get back, Dan will tell us what the uh, the name of the uh, alien that was hunting Boimler was, was. And we'll talk a little bit more about that particular storyline because that was a fun one. All right. We will be right back. Back. Are we back now? Back. Oh, oh, that oh, sounds like Violet Crumble. Oh, some Violet Crumble mm, so good. Sounds mm, delicious. Good. Mm. Mm, good. I gotta get me some of that. Okay, before we start, I know my mouth is filled with sticky chocolate and honeycomb. Don't take my nose to sticky chocolate and honeycomb. Don't take my and honeycomb. I would be remiss if I didn't mention that I recently... Picnic um, biscuit. The same week this episode comes out, um, I was a guest on the Green Shirt podcast. Oh, snap. Talking about the next phase. Uh, we talked about that one. We all talked about uh, a while back, so you can listen to our episode if you like, but definitely check out Green Shirt episode uh, number 100-something on uh, on the next phase. It was, a, it was a really fun time. I really appreciated them in, inviting me to join them. It was a super, super excellent, uh, good conversation. So... Green. Were you just about to say, listen to it on, and then you were going to mention like a radio station on 107.3, but then you changed (laughs) to like on uh, the the subject that they were talking about. Load up your podcast devices and uh, type in green shirt. It's on the internet. It'll come right up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you should have said that. We we talk about it on the internet. Yeah. Yeah, because we're on the internet. Yeah. Way to go. Green green shirt podcast. Kick ass. Check it out. It was fun. Do it. Um, Okay. It's good shit right there. Um, Listen. Um, is a ven a ven it's either Venerix or Venarix. I think it's Venerix. What the name of the alien race? The K Ranch. Yeah. No, it was more complicated than that. No, he's Venerix. No, it was it was definitely Whoa. more complicated. I fucking okay. He well, was like he, he was like Kree Saptoids. I'm glad or he found someone to partake in his Venerix hunt. No, that, I think it was a veterans hunt. No, it's Venerix hunt. I'm yeah, but that's at not it. the name of the people. That's definitely not the name okay, of the species. Okay, first of all, you just said you just backpedaled. You said it was the veterans hunt. Uh, that's how I heard it, but I'll believe I, it if I heard that wrong. But I know I didn't hear the name of the uh, the people wrong. So I'm gonna I'm gonna we're gonna do some live googling here. Oh man! Uh, wait, hey, hey, that's just let's the, come up that's with the, that's the some. lifestyle we we live. Uh, I typed in Cranch Memory Alpha. Cranch. The first option is Ranch Memory Alpha. A ranch was a typical type of farm, particular to the ancient West. Oh, okay. Lord. In 2153, Jonathan Archer claimed that his brother had a ranch west of North Star. Uh, okay. Uh, least dangerous game. All right. I guess they don't have a Cranch entry yet. Cr- it's K you Ranch. Know. It's K Ranch. That's why you're not you're not pronouncing it right. That's why you can't find it. Oh, come on. This is good. <laughs> oh, come on. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. Right. Oh, come on. Is Police. This, is this like the, a really a really exciting way to uh, to, to do the thing? With, I don't think there's anything exciting about this. Song. Are we? I'm Because I'm Googling, too. Oh, no. Are. Memory Alpha, you're shooting a bunch of shit on my screen. Why are you doing that? Yeah, that's a problem. <laughs> if you don't have the, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, ad blocker. The memory Alpha is 
a great resource of information, a, a terrible you know, place to you know, go. You know, alpha well, blocker. To avoid ads. I think they didn't mention his race uh, directly, which is why I sort of assumed it's Venerix because it's their hunt. I, I, I remember his quote, but unfortunately I'm not seeing it. Um, okay. What race, what species, we should say, what species is Cranch? This is. This is- Meet, really edge of your seat meat, stuff. Meet Cranch, the latest Heinz condiment mashup. Yeah, of course. <laughs> from, so like Crunchy Ranch? From 2019. Ketchup, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, ketchup, you're right. Do ketchup and ranch belong together? America has uh, apparently said yes. It's fine well, with me, but I'm staying yeah. clear of that. All right. Okay, so we're just not going to be able to deal with this in any sort of reasonable and or entertaining way. Uh, um, when- I think the I think that guy's really funny and like because he's all super monstrous, and, yeah. and, but he's like it's, it's like super cartoony. He like just keeps bouncing around like like about to catch Boimler and like Boimler. Keeps so here's the deal. Him. One of my favorite things about watching this episode the second time through was that I noticed. That before we even deal, you know, Boimler's talking to Tendi in the bar. You can see Cranch in the background talking to people, oh. and they keep, they're like listening, and they keep shaking their head or saying like, "Oh no," you know. You can see them mouthing like, "No thanks" or something. He's just going around asking every single person. That's why oh, he's super. I didn't he's clock super that. I didn't clock that either. Yeah, he, he was just walking Boimler. to every person hanging out in that yeah. bar, asking if he could hunt them, and then he finally came up to Boimler just as Boimler had determined. That's like that he was going to say yes to whoever on, the next person. That's on was. the level of like just propositioning random strangers. You know. Yeah. It really, it's just. But they're just well, funny. how else are you going to do it? I guess you're right. He's It's, it's what he's got to do. You're going to hunt somebody well, you know? So I was... <laughs> it's funny in... in well, you know, hunt you someone could. someone that you used to know. <laughs> um, I Because in Star Trek and all and sci-fi shows in general, they'll show like tons of these alien types, right? And you don't get to... <laughs> and you don't get to... Uh, uh, different species. And you don't get to... Uh, learn more about a lot of them for for good reason they're just there to you know <laughs> for good reason no no i'm just we saying, don't need any of that just, alien no, no, scum no the the point is, the point being is that that's what you know it's 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 it, it paints a tapestry of the kind of world you're in and there's no reason to like make someone different just so you can inter- interact with them um it just it's nice to have sort of like a more integrated mm. sort of it's nice to have that integrated part so in, anyway that's not the point point is is cranch was lumbering about in the background at the beginning and like you said he was talking to people and they were shaking their head i didn't put that together but he did catch my eye at the beginning i was like i hope they like we go we focus in on yeah. this guy some more and they don't just let him walk by because he looks awesome and then they did and i was really and happy then he, and then he took off his helmet and he looked even yeah. more awesome <laughs> yeah <laughs> and when he's leaving after the agreement yes, from Boiler, he's, all, he's, he's sl- away. Sl- slinking backwards yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah so so he he pulled out his tooth yeah and like put it across <laughs> boimler smeared yeah. his own blood across smeared it. His, on his head which was intense and then when he was hunting boimler it looked like he pulled a spike out of like one of yeah. his <laughs> spikes out of his body that yeah. like one of his, yeah. so he was ripping his body parts like to do this hunt this dude was fucking intense it was it was and he had that funny uh, selfie stick camera thing that yeah they, they took a picture of boimler yeah i like the whole um how they all compared it to um you know uh, fishing you know yeah. basically catch and, catch and, release. Release. Oh, yeah, yeah. and it's like this idea it's like oh it's okay catch and release and then boimler at the end is like my shoulder will never be quite the same yeah. but it's so it's just it's kind of funny well, I, there was, like, I, ma- I, he's like basically it's they, they respect life but they're like maiming it a i was bit first. I, so two things first of all i really i like that ending because from the beginning we know boimler's not going to actually die this guy's not going to kill mm. boimler we yeah. that's reinforced when um, Captain Freeman yeah, had is emotions. initially like going to stop it, but it's like, oh, it's that guy? Oh, yeah. don't worry. So clearly... She had a lovely brunch. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, thanks for the mimosa. Yeah. <laughs> Which is, again, they, on the page, that sounds silly, and, but performed, it just worked out. And, and then just so the well. idea that this creature is going to brunch of all meals. Yeah. Like, they're going to brunch. But at, at the same time... Well, it's a California-class ship. So. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. That's intense. Whoa, Whoa gnarly. Got when in Rome, dude. <laughs> where, else, where else would have a brunch? They don't have brunch on the Enterprise. Yeah, they got a Circle K on what? the Cerritos. Um, Do they? No, I'm just saying because, you know, California. I know they got Circle Ks everywhere, you know, for people. Do they have there. a Ralph's? Yeah, they might have a Ralph's. Ralph. They got those in California, too. What is, what is Ralph's? You can buy liquor at Ralph's. Yeah, Ralph's is, is like a, a convenience store. You can buy liquor yeah. all hours of the night at Ralph's. But... Hmm. The part I liked about Dangerous the stuff. Boimler mentioning his shoulder thing, I actually found that very sort of poignant in the sense that the way they played it was he's got a like a battle wound, right? He's got like mm. an experience wound. He that's partly why I think he wasn't so like put off by it. He's like, mm. okay, this 
it's yeah. kind of cool. I have a reminder of this mm-hmm. weird little adventure I had, which did ultimately benefit him. If I had one minor, tiny little critique of this episode, and I don't even think it really qualifies as a critique, it's that like I wasn't sure what which side we were supposed to take. Were we supposed to take Tendi's side and think she was saying Boimler was going too mm-hmm. far, and and what she was saying was logical. But on the other hand, the way the episode plays out. All of Boimler's actions, right. including being hunted by Cranch, benefited him uh, both in terms of his own True. self-confidence and in terms of uh, advancing his right. career and relationships with others. Right, because they 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 had to do. I guess due to the due to whatever they escalated it really do quick. It. Yeah, do 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 whatever do other. It. They had to, they escalated it really quickly to the point where it's like, oh no, you said yes too many times. Even Tendy's like freaking out, and and yeah, and and it was humorous, and you knew, like you said, you knew he wasn't gonna die, but he doesn't die, and then they never actually escalated to a point where he's something bad yeah. actually happens, and like you said. This you could consider this something bad that happened, but it like yeah he he not only survived it he was he was all he was all into it you know? and it was so. a it was a funny way to end it in terms of uh, like you know again he wasn't going to die we didn't expect he was going to die but he didn't figure out a way out through some clever plan of his he didn't get saved by some outside party. Uh, mm-hmm. nobody was really taking it seriously anyway. He was wearing a bowl on his head at the end when he was like, he's the hunter, the hunted <laughs> is becoming the hunter. <laughs> and like, he was wearing some bowl on yeah. his head. Which, by the way, like the, the, excellent. They always become the hunter. Excellent line when Kranz right. was giving him notes. And yeah, stuff. a few yeah. notes. He's like, dude. Stick and move. Dude, yeah, you, stick you, and you, move. You, yeah, yeah, exactly. You don't have to like just announce it. <laughs> so Boimler learned something that Yeah, that, that, is, that is great. It's, he, he, the, 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 he described it, uh, what Boimler should have done, you know, figuratively, yeah. like a stick and move. It's like, yeah. don't, don't just come out and say it, you know. You just figuratively, you know, whatever. Uh, uh, so what uh, What other parts about this particular subplot, which I guess is basically the B plot of the well, episode? Um, well, there was... Um, the Shaxx part. The Shaxx part. So, right. And the, 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 we have the saddest, ball. saddest dirges. Uh, yeah, the they're all crying. Dirge choir. <laughs> Everyone's crying at the end. Shaxx is like, wow, that was great. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Boimler was saddest. totally tearing up. Too. I like that we need a soprano for our like depressing dirge, which is it's kind of funny. But yeah, dirge choir. <laughs> Like the and then player. after that was what's that guy's name? Lundy. Lundy, Lundy right? So, Who's right. that creepy guy? We've seen him before. He was being all shitty to uh, yeah he's, to uh, he's uh, Orion's like, yeah. in the season right, so, two episode. So so in both cases they had him play uh, spring ball. Um, is they said we need a wiry dude, and then Lundy wanted to have him painted because he was like we need a skeletal frame. They <laughs> like this one. So that that's those are yeah, the three. That was weird. So those are the three <laughs> things Boimler got from this. Because um, that guy's saying, also creepy. Yeah. So. The three things they got is he got a made a connection with Shax. He um you know got a battle wound. With, Shax still owes him a favor. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. That's pretty good. He got, which it, I bet will come up again. Yeah, that's what I was about going to ask. Is like, will that come up again? We know that the the thing was sort of resolved with um crack cranch cracks cranch cranch. You mean the uh, Heinz combination oh, of ketchup and ranch? ranch? I thought it was going to be crunchy ranch. I would prefer that. <laughs> Just like ranch with that big chunks. In it. Yeah, like like big chunky chunks peanut of butter. <laughs> Chunks of ranch, <laughs> like, chunk, like when you squirt it out the bottle, it's all like chunks poop, of ranch poop, Doritos. Poop, poop, poop. It's gone bad. Could be ranch Doritos. Yeah, just poop, just balls uh, of ranch. Balls Dorito. of put put a bunch of Doritos in there though. That would be good. See, that's right? a better idea. I you was thinking have, croutons. You could have you could have ranch soup. Which, croutons made out of Doritos. You, you could make ranch soup with just ranch dressing and crumbled up Doritos and eat it with a spoon. Uh, you lost me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. You don't want ranch soup? Oh. No, I don't. How about ranch cereal? Just call it cereal then. Okay, so. <laughs> <laughs> just just call that. soup yeah. cereal. Yeah, just call it cereal. <laughs> just take a shit in your hand and call it cereal. So, <laughs> <laughs> take a shit in my hand. And call it I hope that's crunchy. It's crunchy. Uh, <laughs> Cranch, <laughs> Cranch and Shaxx both have this similar intensity. Um, okay, well, um, yeah. but uh, back to my point. Um, They're warriors, man. Anyway, They're back warriors. at the Cranch. Back at the Cranch. <laughs> I stole your you joke. did it. You did it in an appropriate spot, though. I just kind of shoved it in there. Nice Gross. and nice and good. Gross. Um, Gross. so so that sort of like, oh yeah, Boimler feels better about himself. But what did he really get from Lundy? He's less creeped out by Lundy. Is that pretty much all he got? He's like, now I'm less creeped out by Lundy. It's not like he didn't I get a connection. I'm more, I'm more I, yeah, I don't think he's Lundy. less creeped out by him. I know, but that that was what he was saying at the end. He's like, I got to know Lundy. Um, I'm. I think there was some kind of reference to being to finding Lundy le- less creepy. Yeah, it could be. I, if 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 there were, I missed. If there were, if there were. 
I missed it. Okay, he goes, okay, um, he the line goes, I've been saying yes to everything today, giving way outside getting way outside my comfort zone. And so far, Shaq says he owes me a favor. I'm not afraid of Chief Lundy anymore. And dot dot dot. Okay. So he's not a, all right, so, all right, all right, so all right, all right. Bold Zoimler. So, so that's the best he got from Lundy. Lundy was he's not like afraid of him anymore. Now, is that something that could come up later? Could Lundy now play more of a role in the in the show, maybe? Maybe Lundy will be a predator to someone else and uh, he'll have to You mean a prey? Stop him. Or will, will Lundy become a prey or predator? I think he will stay He's a already he a, stay stay a predator. predator. Yeah. He is a predator, all right. So um when when uh when Cranch was 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 sniffing that candle and it made his eyes like fill with blood, was <laughs> yeah, he was, was he so doing cool. some I can only imagine that candle was filled with some kind of like 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 speed and hallucinogenic or something. There's was some, some kind, kind of alien magic. Yeah, there drugs. was some some kind of drug that pumped you up before a hunt and like made you super mm. super awesome. By the way, I finally discovered that the uh no, uh, species that Cranch is a member of is called the Cromsopioids. Cromsopioids. Cromsopioids? Crums Pioids. I what, bet it's Cromsopioids. Cromsopioids. How do you spell which, that? Which planet are they? Cromsopia. Cromsopia. I, do I don't know. Sloppy. Come, come, slop. Come, gotcha. <laughs> come, <laughs> gotcha. Lava tubes. Come, slop you yet? Come, sla- sloppy, um, gotcha you yet? It's come, spelled K R O M S A P I O D S. Because I recall. Crumsap- I bet it's Cromsopioids. Crumbopulus Michael? Crum- it's not Cromsopioids. Melmac? It's, it's Cromsop. Hey, Melmac! <laughs> hey! Hey, Melmac! <laughs> you got any cat? Sorry. <laughs> Cromsopioids. Crumsopi- yeah. He's from Crum- Crum- Jesse Crumsopolis. You got the Alf Q much quicker on this episode. I yeah, did. I picked uh, up. Jesse, you remember Jesse Crumsopolis? Crumsopi- Crumsopioid <laughs> from Full House? <laughs> Uh, oh man! Anything oh, else man. about this particular storyline that stands mm, out? Let me think. Things that make you go. Mm. I like how dickish he was to that jockey dude who was out invited him to Spring Ball. Like, he was. He was pretty dickish. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's like that. That's, that's like that kid in you know middle school who who's trying to fit in and can't and just ends up like alienating every everyone and then wondering like why nobody likes him. Well, I I'll, I will be interested to see where the the, uh, where Boimler goes after this because the episode concluded with him remaining determined to be the bold Boimler. So Yeah, I mean that probably will pass. I well, I'm sure but, 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 but maybe you never su- you, in subtle ways. But you don't you don't know what this with this show. This they, I, one thing I like is more shows start to do this thing I feel where they they I mean cuz in in stark contrast to like the classic sit 80s 90s sitcom formula where every week was something just totally different it was all you had in common was the same characters maybe Jesse might move out of the house and full house and that was the most sort of character development you really get did but, he just move up to the attic or whatever I oh, yeah you're right he did just move up to <laughs> Becky <laughs> I like, didn't even move out of the house yeah he just moved to the attic with Becky and uh oh yeah. do we really have to do this Jesse, I'd be mad if I were you because Patrick gave you shit for doing that. I'm starting to, I'm trying, to I'm trying to stir the pot. Do you want a piece? No. You sure? I'm positive. I'll break off a piece for you. I don't want your SARS. Right. No, I mean SARS. I'll, I'll get the non I'll get the end bit. You want the butt of my violet crumble? Well, when you put it that way, no. Okay. Thank you though. Thank All you for right. the offer. That's very that's very that's very nice of you. The issue is, look, I don't want to upset the podcast audience with with sounds of eating. That was a sound of you swallowing just then. Yeah, and um, I'm clear. I'm messing up my 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 vocal quality by I'm having making, a bunch of I'm making up honey, my, honeycomb my, in here. My vocal quality by having honeycomb, a bunch of honeycomb, and and goo. But it's really fucking good. <laughs> but it's really you have good. never had anything those like this. Are, the honeycomb oh is all I've had puffy that. and those stuff. Those are really yeah. good. Yeah, I've oh had those. God. It's, it's like future candy. I like those. <laughs> it's like it's like that's I like why those, it's like Star Trek candy. I like those Kinder chocolate things though more. I yeah, think. Are yeah, good. Those, those are good, but those aren't those aren't quite as specialist. I don't violet know. Crumble. I like those Kinder chocolates. If you're not into Violet Crumble, you might try a tr- Crunchy. You I like Goopy. Crunchy? I like Goopy chocolate bars. <laughs> <and stuff. laughs> okay, now I know what to get for your birthday. Grow up, dude. <laughs> All right, grow up, uh, dude. How about- um, wait, wait. So, 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 so. I was just saying that. Uh, 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 I feel uh, you never know what they're gonna bring back and what they're not, and that's cool because they might bring it back with more new Boimler, but they might just forget it. You don't know. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to 
wrestling it keeps you guessing it does keep you guessing it's like the evolution of the wrestling world where we always knew it was fake and then in the future they admitted it was fake but then like real life stuff would sometimes get sort of like real life dramas would would like there was two wrestlers that in real life um you mean what? like the guy who murdered his family no 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 you mean the guy who no. fell from the rafters oh my and god died? don't be an asshole that's real life that's real life stuff <laughs> no that's that not what i'm talking about i'm talking about there was one where there's these two wrestlers and they were both um one was like this is a very wrestling heavy podcast. This, the, 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 oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, brother. Um, so there was one wrestler, and he was dating this girl, and they were in, they were together forever, and they loved each other. But then that other girl, forever. The, the story was it Bam Bam Bigelow. No, the story. He was the most agile big man in all of wrestling. Um, so, <laughs> so it, the, the they broke up. The girl cheated on him with another guy who was another wrestler, and they worked that into the plot line where it was like they'd actually like they so it turned happened into, in real life. Yeah, you're confident that it happened in real yes, life. Yes, this is fa- this just... is a, this is a famous sort of okay. event. Unless, wow. unless you know, the thing is, is they might be bringing their story into real life and making it real. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's fake. <laughs> it's real. It's fake. Uh, so right, anyway, <laughs> let's. Why don't we move along? <laughs> Move, move along, along home. home. It's to, just the um, point is, is you never know what's going to happen, and that's what's fun. Okay. Um, that's one of the many things that are fun. Yes. Man. Yeah. So, <laughs> okay. Let's, I'm let's, done. Let's talk about Mariner's side of things. The A plot. I really liked um, when Mariner was like skydiving yeah. on the orbital lift. That was really nice uh, animation. It yeah, that was it cool. looked really cool. It yeah. was like some kind of updated like Wiley e. Coyote or something. Yeah, when she, <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a yeah, great way to put it. Oh, there was that other episode um when Tendy there was a where Tendy looked like a Warner Brothers character. I remember in mm. season one where uh, Mariner's always like, "You always got to be so cheerful all the time. Sometimes things shit sucks." Blah 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 blah. And Tendy's like, "Sorry." And mm-hmm. it was weird that episode has weird Bugs Bunny kind of look to yeah. it. But I'm trying to remember each what season they was, improve season on the animation started out great, but each season Tip Mouse. Which I believe is the uh, animation studio that that handles. It's the, not Teensy Fly. No, I think it's Tit Mouse. Teensy Fly. It's not Titty Kaka. Mount Titty Kaka or Lake Titty Kaka. Lake, Lake, Lake Titty Kaka. I don't think there's a mount. Is it's it? probably. Not. It's a plain Titty Kaka. Yeah. Uh, huh? <laughs> there's that bird that's called like a great tit. Yeah, great tit. It's some great tit. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> uh, what was I saying? I, Proper tits. Oh, uh, we were talking about. <laughs> oh yeah, the animation is good. Tit Mouse is doing a good job with this. Uh, oh, with, so with yeah, this, yeah. When uh, when animation. Yeah, when um when when she was sleeping was when even she was better. sleeping and her arms all waggled They're around. All flat. <laughs> that reminded me of something. I'm trying to put oh, my yeah. finger on it. Maybe it was there was it was the way their arms were all flapping around reminded me of some other cartoon. Was it a some? My fi- oh, it was a cartoon. It. I was worried it was going to be one of those horrific. No, uh, I don't watch YouTube those. videos where somebody passes no. out while. Uh, no. skydiving or something no i don't watch videos where people's bones fall apart and things like that <laughs> you, you, you don't watch videos about people with osteoporosis oh, i mean <laughs> bones fall apart what are you talking you about you know when you get two kickboxers that kick at each other's shins and then oh, their, and leg their leg gets break. all floppy what about the you hand you gotta take your vitamins do you like, the, do you like the hand surgery nauseous. videos like no hand of course surgery? not of course not Right. What's wrong with you? I'm just exploring the <laughs> contours of your your life. I am fascinated by people that are not bothered by it. I'm I'm simultaneously I simultaneously respect and am frightened of them. So I, it, there are different types of people in the world. I remember when my daughter was uh, maybe three, four years old. Uh, she asked us what the inside of a cat looked like. No. <laughs> 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 and I think I think she proceeded to watch some uh, veterinary videos that were showing, you know, like gallbladder surgery or something. And, on a, and that on a satisfied cat. it. Oh, that's right, because she was all into like stuff with monsters. And, oh, like, she still is. All sorts it's, of. Like, I just imagine that that's kind of question you get where like, uh, let's hope she finds out and leaves it at that. <laughs> no, no, but when when you have a child and they start asking questions like that, uh, there are only really two options from that point. They can either become a surgeon. Which is a legal right. psychopath, or they um, be just become a regular old on the street psychopath. Right. Either way is fine. You got to right. guide that psychopathy in the correct direction psychopathy. to benefit society in some. Fashion. Well, it's like uh, I think. Um, well, I mean, it just dep- how do you define benefit? A lot of like business. <laughs> <laughs> Jesse's over here arguing well, that serial killers perform a, an important I, function in society. Well, when when you um, lead a, comp- a, a like a powerful company or 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 you lead an army or something like that, there's got to be some amount of of sociopathy or or psychopathy, psychopathy. 
um, is as well. There's some kind of thing Perhaps in there. Both. There, there's where you're able to make these maneuvers, and, and <laughs> he's, just, he's like, yeah, it's just a, he's just a cheeky guy. He's got personality. <laughs> but in order, killed all those civilians. You what just, a cheeky you fella. Just, you just, if you want to like do some shit like that, you really have to like turn the empathy off because. Uh, yeah, although we, uh, there are examples, at least fictional examples, and, and again, bringing you back to Star Trek, um, we don't see that as much in Star Trek. They they occasionally show that. They occasionally show the maniacal or megalomaniacal captain or admiral or whatever. Um, megalomaniacal. But yes, so the, but yes. The, 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 the Mariner slash Ransom slash Rutherford slash uh, Billups storyline uh, was- We don't see much of Stevens lately. Yeah, Stevens, we, we you know you don't need to. He's he's just there to Not be yet. like we'll the obsequious you know, sort of brown we'll noser. We'll which awesome. two episodes in? We'll see him. Which is the one that is emotionally fragile? That's Stevens, right? Yeah. And yeah, was Stevens the one? He's that, always sucking up to ransom. Because I remember, yeah, the, and so I remember at the beginning of the series at season one, I was like, which one's Billups? And and there was an I couldn't remember. There which, was one episode where it was confusing. Yeah, yeah and I couldn't remember who Billups was the more, has hair. Yeah. Which one was the and and big I'm, old dong? And I'm trying to remember which is the one they From mentioned. That, from the episode where we met his mommy. Right. So I'm trying to remember which one they mentioned first, if it was Billups or and they didn't mention Stevens till later. Or well, if it was I the think we saw around. Stevens first. You saw him, but there wasn't, it wasn't, he wasn't a thing. Mm. He was just there to confuse you. So they've, so, so Billups has been brought more to the forefront than yeah. Stevens. There's a Billups and Stevens sort of battle that's going well, on. Well, Billups is the, he's, he's the main engineering head, guy. Yeah. Uh, and and I uh, Paul Shear does such a great job with the. I mean, I don't mean that there's a battle within the show. I mean, like when I see Billups and Stevens in my mind, there's some kind of character battle of who's going to win the m- most prominence. And I think Billups <laughs> is definitely winning right you now. Know, you know what my advice <laughs> is there, Dan? Fella. You know what my advice is there. Get over it. Just, just you know, why stop thinking that way? If they were that th- easy, why don't you think about something else? <laughs> we'd we all be peasy and sleazy. <laughs> yeah, we would indeed. Um, all right. Anything else? I mean, um, obviously there's other stuff to say about this storyline. We talked about the parachuting. Talked about the parachuting. We already discussed uh, telepathic uh, baby. Ransom Ransom's evil sort of computer whole thing. sentient volcano. I did enjoy this planet there's a sentient they went computer to. and it there's a sentient volcano. Too. No, there's a sentient god volcano. Well, the, com- the computer no, no. talks. Yes, but, I mean, there the, the is. No, 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 I know it is. Volcano. No, but it's not. The, the only, but, uh, 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 they only refer to sentience for leader th- 355, which was the computer. They no, said they re- they didn't. There was a line about the sentient volcano. No, they said a sentient computer. They did not say sentient they volcano. They did earlier on. They did earlier on. They I don't when they so. weren't sure who when was When they didn't know about the psychic yeah. baby or the computer they yeah. referred to a sentient okay volcano. fine maybe they did but they settled nah, on you looked it up on chakotay.net or whatever but the, the volcano <laughs> what's that what's that website well, you, yeah, you always use it's a, the volcano t- did speak so it's, they said uh, well it's the the older episodes are on chakotay.net Ah, but the, new episodes, but the new ones are on some shitty transcript thing that works but isn't as good um okay but what they settled on what they settled on because they were like they were talking about ascension but they were talking about some other they were talking about like a telepathic baby but what they settled on was men drink the psychic baby yes. psychic baby. and they said leader 355 of the sentient computer and then they referred to vol- the volcano was volcanic lord morgo yeah morgo. Either, which was essentially a vulcan volcano spirit but you're right they did say earlier vol- earlier. earlier so yeah. so the question is is like you know which is which i would think the volcano would be kind of like the president leader kind of role um, which would be the which did, would be the legislative did, branch? Which enjoy would be the that jur- line? What was the the, the line? Like it provides a system of checks. Yeah, and exactly. Balances. Exactly. <laughs> it's like, but, it's like, but how exactly? Yeah, have, is it like two out of three or something? Yeah. Like, how does but, that work? Yeah, I know. So they must have had their different roles, but I like that because right, every planet there's always some like one leader, you know, of these these sort of. It was fun. And they were combining so many things here because these. Uh, what they were called? That was like funny D- too. D- Delonians or something De-lo- like that. Delon, 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 They had. De-lo- they, oh, and the marking was like the the symbol on the the computer. Yes, yes. Like some that of that like naval marking. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's right because they were all about naval. Yeah, they, they got in trouble because they didn't show their naval, and then they referred to the volcano as like the navel of the planet yeah, and so yeah, they didn't outright say it but and that, then, and but then that's they got why... extra trouble because billups had an audi belly button yeah right right and so they they brought they didn't just make it random they actually brought it home when they mentioned that the navel so they yeah. had this weird 
But the yeah. other thing going on with the Delonians or whatever they're called, the the, um, yeah, the Dyson Spherians, the uh, the, the, new, the Delorians, the, well the Delorians, the, it, the, it's, it's the they, they're, they're, it's a Dulanians. They were similar Dulanians, to the they were similar yeah. to those people, you know, when Wesley Crusher falls into the garden. Yes, of course, because they're all like friendly and kissing people. Mm-hmm. Um, all in shape I like. Sure. There's a wellness based society. Yeah, I mean, that <laughs> that was, was a funny. And idea. it was it, with the Mariner having to the, climb the climb that rock wall. the rock wall. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> silly, but also it worked within that it's culture funny. uh that was all fun uh the animation was great uh, again uh taking advantage of the world building they can do with the I, I, I noticed most of this in the second watch in particular you see it in the first watch but you're paying attention to the story in the second watch you can appreciate how detailed and gorgeous like the backgrounds are and the matte paintings and and all the stuff that's going on at the same time all these characters like each character you look at is doing something sort of cute or amusing mm-hmm. if you pay, start paying attention to things other than the, what the main characters are doing yeah the um speaking of mariner falling off the thing and going back up the thing. So she had a groany episode where she kept groaning the yeah. whole episode. And she did this like open mouth Charlie Brown style. Yeah. Thing. And she was like, ah! Well, it was also sort of Calvin and Hobbish. Uh, yeah, you know, it was. When Calvin yeah. was... Uh, in, in in similar circumstances right so she had like, this quiet groan when ransom tells billups and rutherford not to have too much fun he's like don't have too much fun she's kind of like Ugh. but then when billups and rutherford call back and rutherford's like i just might have to get a transfer again she's like oh <laughs> yeah. and then she then then she before she jumps off the space elevator she's like oh and then when she like when she like finds that climbing wall she's like oh this wellness based society <laughs> and then like it was funny when she got to the top ransom is just so like 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 he had to go visit the little he, commander's room. He's so self-centered or something or narcissistic or I don't know. That Same he, thing. Yeah, he didn't, he didn't notice that she's like there like sweaty and panting and just like, going, <laughs> he was like, let's go. Ha ha. I don't notice that anything's wrong. You're all sweaty everywhere. But then she gave another groan. She's like, ah. So she's been doing right, a lot of supposed, groaning. He's supposed to be keeping an eye on her and he's just like, he wasn't. No, because he's because he's like, he's just he's all too, he was in the bathroom for yeah. a while, so he's, I presume yeah. he was doing he was doing a commander's poopy. Yeah, he but was, he was he's also just a very self centered. Number sort one of. was taking a number two. <laughs> yeah, he's just number one. I order you to take a number two. He was having a number one's number two. So he was just uh, he's a really selfish, selfish, self centered kind of. Not, no, that's a good explanation for you that. Know, I buy know, into that. I will buy into that. I buy into that. I buy into that for a dollar. Uh, so the psychic baby ha- w- had a funny voice. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what that was parodying, except maybe like Baylock. The Carbomont Carbomite maneuver. It, it, it was. It, it, I I'm just not a hundred percent sure. It just what the sounds. Baby was. It sounds so like just like a generic yeah. kind of thing. They had though, plenty to do. of computer planets. Uh, <laughs> TOS had like two episodes yeah. that had computer mm-hmm. planets. The, uh, and the pre- there was a previous. Uh, lower decks yes. where they where they had the with Jeffrey Combs computer, the Jeff- Jeffrey Combs computer and they put them on the like the jail planet for- <laughs> with all the other I mean there computers. was there was the recent um uh, Strange New Worlds episode of course that this would have been wouldn't have been able to base itself off that it would be too close to it but when they had um the the that episode where 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 um. Uh, uh, still, you have not provided enough clues. You know where the where the um, you, waiting. Where Dan, the, Dan's what? making weird globe like shapes with his hand. I'm trying not to be too re- to reveal too much about the episode. You, you don't want to spoil anything. an epi- <laughs> you don't, don't want to spoil an episode of Strange It was, New it World. was the young person that was the lead that was like destined to become the leader of that planet. <laughs> okay. Oh. How does that compare to this episode? Because you're talking about, we're talking about like, where did the baby come from? And so this is kind of like that, except it's a oh, baby. baby. Okay. It's the baby, but it's, right. it's not, it, it's not a baby. The, the young person was not a baby in the, baby. in the strange new world episodes. But, and I'm just thinking that it just kind of like one of those things that it seems tropey, right? It seems like you'd have like some kind of psychic, yeah. weird, uh, like baby. Psychotropy? Though. Psychotro, psychotropy. Anyways. Um, yeah. So you were saying the computer, uh, was from some stuff and then you were saying, <laughs> The Joe versus the volcano. <laughs> Joe versus the volcano, which is a good movie. Aww. That's a really good movie, actually. It's surprisingly good. I believe it did not do well in the theaters. No, it's so weird. I saw it in the theater. It's a bizarre movie. Early Tom Hanks for those uh, who have not made the effort. At this point, I guess that is early. To it's, appreciate it, Money Pit. Money Pit's not as good a movie as Joe Joe the Volcano, but it's a highly it's entertaining. Money Pit entertaining. is really entertaining. entertaining. Yeah. Joe Joe versus the Joe volcano is, is, an, I, is I, an interesting it, fucking movie. Yeah, after I watch it, I'm just kind of like I don't know exactly I what know. I watched or got out of that. But it was really interesting. Very it, interesting. It had yeah. like twists and turns in it. Yeah. yeah. It was cool. All right. So, 
<laughs> so that concludes. We should, next the, time we're going to talk about Joe the Vol- no. Joe. Versus so you only mentioned two Tom movie. Hanks movies. There's also the was it the Bachelor or no that was Bachelor Dustin. Party. A Bachelor Party. The Bachelor is with uh, Dustin. Uh, Bachelor Party. Uh, right? That's a pretty fun movie, actually. Yeah. Bachelor Party. Bachelor Party is a pretty. Fun and Big movie. is a classic. Big's okay. It's a classic, though. It it is a classic. I personally find it a tad overrated. Yeah, big is. Yeah. I mean, it's Tom so, Hanks uh, is great in it. I just, I don't. It's, know. It was just his big breakthrough movie. Is the thing. So of course it's going to be. It that, just, I don't, I don't know. It's just, I don't, I don't know. think Bachelor Party was his breakthrough movie. His big breakthrough was Bosom Buddies. Big break, 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 buddy. <laughs> you just said that. <laughs> just to say that. Then there was the Burbs, which was a weird Burbs one. Is, that's a great movie, too. That's a weird fucking movie. Yeah, that is uh, weird. It does, that's it, a little hard to watch at isn't times. Isn't the this doctor? Is weird. The doctor is in yeah. the Burbs? The doctor who looks like Teller from Penn and Teller. Is that actor? The actor who plays the doctor in the Burbs? No, the doctor in Voyager. Oh, Robert plays Picardo. A gar- Robert Picardo plays a garbage man in the Burbs, doesn't uh, he? I think in the, he does. In the Burbs, there's that character. I've never seen the there Burbs. Was that, there's a character in the Burbs. The, the creepy neighbor in the Burbs who looks like that actor that looks like fucking Teller from Penn and Teller. I can't remember his name. I'm going to look it up. I remember in like the sixth grade or something, some kid was telling me all about the Burbs. Maybe we should be doing so a weird. Tom Hanks podcast on the side. Yeah. On the side. It's got Tom Hanks. Maybe uh, we can get an interview him for every episode. And, oh, the Carrie Fisher was in the Burbs. Yeah, yeah. Burbs is a star-studded cast. I remember hearing about that. Henry yeah. Gibson, Doctor Werner. Oh, Henry Gibson's great. And he was a doctor. He played Doctor Werner Klopek. And, he also and so, played. He played an <laughs> Illinois Nazi in Blues Brothers. <laughs> and he was guy. on last. So he yeah. looks kind of like Teller from Penn and Teller. Okay, we're gonna take it a break. Does. We've yeah. got a little bit more to oh, talk man. about uh, <laughs> Tom Hanks and related stuff. So we're gonna do that over the break, so we don't burden you, the audience, with that. And when we come back, we don't burbs break, in you. When we come back from break, we'll, put the burbs in you. <laughs> we're gonna wrap things up. I promise. <laughs> Promise, we're gonna you're, you're, you're almost there. Get the burbs. We're gonna on wrap you. things up. You don't. You don't got too much more to listen to, but you are obligated at this stage. Yeah, it's too late now. You got to finish up. You got to. <laughs> <laughs> this is a point of no <laughs> return. Right. It's not. What's that one? Is the fallacy the sunken cost fallacy? It's not that. It's the point of no return. Yes. And just basic internet politeness. Yeah. Come At this on. point, you owe it to us. You owe us this much. There might some of the best shit might be coming in the next in the next. It's section. gonna blow we your fucking we mind. We don't know. And you want to be the first to hear know. it. Yeah. All right. Well, you, you don't know that. Find out. <laughs> you can listen to it first, and you can sell that experience of listening or that experience you felt that when you listened to it first and you felt that elation, knowing that it became <laughs> the most famous thing ever. We will package that experience, and you can and, and and you can package it and sell it to other people and get rich off of it. All right. Every time. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> We're back. Are we? We're back. I know uh, it's a little confusing because uh, I've managed thus far to refrain from taking yet another bite from that delicious you can do vial. It. Oh, vial is there of still more of that jingle? I've got a lot. Do you want some, Jesse? Yeah, kind of. Here, okay. I'm going to get. I'm, yeah. Hold on. Is this really going on? I, I'm not biting into it. I'm just going to break off a piece for Jesse. Hold on. I just take off my headphones here. I'm going to walk across the, uh, the studio. I'm going to walk over here to Mr. Jesse. Here you go. Here's oh, thanks, man. Wow. That's a big old bite. Yeah. The big old butt load. Yeah. The BOB. <clears throat> Damn right. It's a big old bite. All right. Get the headphones back on. Okay. We're back in business. Thanks, man. That's that's some serious See, candy. Jesse, you're, sm- you're smacking around. Nobody likes to hear smacking. <laughs> what, what they do if they like ASMR? No, they like to hear chewing. Do they like to hear people like smacking noise? I'm not even going to do it because it's like gross to me. If you're sexy enough, they yeah. like it when you smack the lips. Jesse oh, qualifies oh, for sure. Yeah. As you know, yeah. as you well oh, know. Smack, smack, smack and do a slim smack your lips. Smack. <laughs> You've you combined Randy Savage and Bill Cosby. Smack your lips. I don't know. <laughs> this, you're, this is a problematic podcast we're, oh, we're producing. I'm just yeah. going to stop it right there. Okay. Um, I that's know, the it's end of our podcast. It's, no, it's un- <laughs> no, you know, you're just stopping the podcast. Yeah, I'm calling it. I'm calling it. All right. So uh, we, we have to provide any any other important conclusions that we may have missed in all this nonsense we've been doing uh, um, and or some odds and ends. So I, I was, it was, Oh, she was talking about to ransom when she was, when, when he was talking to her and she was falling off that thing, he was like, what's that noise or whatever. And she said, she's like, I opened an exterior pressure conduit and like, and it seems like such a vague thing. It's like, oh, you open an exterior pressure yeah. conduit, and that's that's that accounts for the noise. Yes. And it's like, why are you doing that? You know, it's just kind of funny. Like, it's it was like, just a like fart. it's like and nobody ever questioned if that's what it really sounds like and why she did it, which is another funny ransom thing to do, if I do say so myself. Um, In this case, that is what's going to happen. Yeah. 
I mean, Nobody else can say that, but you. What do you what do you think about what do you think about uh twenty sided die? I think they're awesome. Now here's the thing. When you <laughs> I think he set you up, Jesse. Dan set you up oh, for some God fuck he's, he's gonna lay down some fucked up shit. You know, oh, it's, man. I think it's very, I think this is something that a lot of people have thought of. When you have two <laughs> die to make dice. Two pieces of die to make dice. Ali, Ali. Two units of die. There are two sixes, generally speaking, right? So you went through 12. Now, there's different numbers. There's different odds for each number you get. The most common being like uh, seven, six, or something like that. It's usually like, like, I think the number's in the middle, generally. Yeah, right, right which makes sense. And and two two sixes or two ones are the least likely. So you got these odds, right? And so, oh, you got to roll of this to get this. Oh, if you roll you that. You got to roll of this to if get you, this. If this is really easy to get this because you got to roll a six for it. But if you, this is really hard, you got to roll a two for it. Or seven is probably the most likely. And so the the two is really hard. So the, the odds are built into the structure of the situation. But with the 20-sided dice, there's an equal likelihood of getting any one of those 20 numbers. So the way you have to work it out is you have to say, you have to make ranges. You have to invent the odds yourself. You have to say, okay, well, if you roll a one, you fail. If you roll a two through five, then this. If you roll a five through 12, that's even more likely. You could say if you roll a 15 through a 20, and that would be more likely than just hitting a straight 10. Where I'm, I'm, you see what I'm saying? Where the likelihood of Jesse getting- Jesse and I, by the way, audience, Jesse and I are looking at each other. Because Dan Dan has developed this bizarre habit in recent months. He's always bringing up fucking math. <laughs> He's always shouting a bunch of numbers. It's the it's, it's a bunch of math. What's well, the interface to existence is math, basically. So you were talking about like six d sixes. Two two d yeah two d sixes, <laughs> which does not add up to twenty. No, but the point is, <laughs> is if you say if you say roll a seven. And you're like, oh boy, that's. But it's be- still, it wouldn't. It would work the same way. But there's just more number no, possibilities in the middle. Well, so look, I'm inclined to side with Jesse. No, 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 no. But look, I'm insufficiently uh, experienced. If you bro, said area of if inquiry, you said if you said make a determination. if you said roll a seven with two d sixes, that's very likely to get. If you oh, if yeah, you said okay. if you said roll a seven with a d twenty, it's just as likely to roll a seven as it is to an eight, a it's nine, a one out of twenty or, chance. Right. Whereas with the die, the number okay. the numbers the odds change I because there's two saying. involved. See, yeah. yeah okay, right. Okay. And so that's the problem I have with a twenty sided dice. But you can make up. Maybe for that. that should be the problem you have with having two. D sixes. No, that's what I like about D sixes is because. But the thing is, is but you can still account for it is because instead of saying and it's and that would be different than a you, D, two D sixes is different than rolling a D twelve. Yes, exactly, precisely, exactly. And so in those cases, you can't get a one. See, so, he wanted to talk about a fucking D twelve versus two D sixes, and he he snuck that into the conversation because they mentioned a D twenty in the episode, and a D twenty is not even relevant to this particular statistical debate. Okay, it's relevant enough. I'm not critiquing it. I'm just pointing that out. Well, it's relevant I like those, enough uh, percentile because dice. because you hear more about you hear more about twenty sided dice than you do a d twelve one d twelve. You hear more about twenty sided. I like it where to, you roll the two ten sided and like one is the see tens those are those are interesting. But these are things you have to take into account when playing a game. <laughs> if you if there's a game you're playing that the, the numbers you have to roll are between two and twelve. Right. You can't go into that, just bring your, your 12-sided die and say, we're going to play with this. You right. Because what if you roll a Cause, one? Because if, well, the, what if you roll a one? You have to roll again. And and you have to roll again. Oh, <laughs> but, <yeah. laughs> Melder, who but, said anything about but, this? Super but the point yeah. is, is that in order to roll a hard seven with two D6s is more likely to happen than with a D12. Okay. All so right. it's important right. the right. kind of dice you use. Because right. it's caked and it's caked into the way the odds are presented to the were, player. They were just using the I think they were just using the, the D20 system. Yeah, yeah they, okay. Okay. they were. Okay. I'm just okay. saying the D20 the system is different. Everyone, that's what I'm everyone. saying. That's all my right. whole point. All right. All right. All right. I appreciate this conversation. I've provided a lot of latitude here. In part, I've re- he's provided us latitude. In part, Thank you. Thank you, Patrick, <laughs> for providing us latitude. In part, in part, because I do think that this conversation will be of a certain level of interest to a broad section of our audience. I think audience. it's very basic. I would hope so. I think it's a very basic concept. Yes, no, I, would I agree so. with all this. I, I, I'm honestly fascinated by this conversation. However, this it's is not a Star Trek Star 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 podcast. Well, called, I'm talking about Batlets and Binux. No, but you're not really. <laughs> you say you are. Like you're almost, but you're not. You're almost, you were kind of like. You were using that as an excuse to talk about like. You just wanted to shut up. Some man. You were, you were, you were, you were, you were simultaneously berating and pleading with me. Yeah. <laughs> 
Uh, okay. Fine. We'll, we'll I talk, made my point. Yeah, and and no doubt people who know who have the have the the, the underlying mathematical proofs, they'll email them to us at feedback at scottstartrek.com mm-hmm. or contact us on social media, yes. which we'll provide in just a bit and give us what the correct answer is. That well, there was I, no I, and, there was no that. answer. It was more just like no, there well, the is an answer. You've, you've I didn't ask a question. No, though. no, but you've made an assertion which. Quite likely, may be correct. If yeah, it well, is correct, well, people it's, will write it's, in. It's, it's a fact that it's true. If you go into... You, I'm asking for... No, I'm not! Why am I doing this? It's because I'm interested. What I'm saying is that I want to see the explanation that that convinces me that you're correct. If you had a D... I don't have if enough you had information. A, if you had a D12 and had to re-roll yes, on a no, 1, I know if you it's different saying. odds than rolling two D12, no, I, two D6s. I know you're stating that, and I'm declaring... This is not a I, I think it's very. I think it's self-evident. I, I, I understand that you do, and I'm saying because I lack sufficient information, I cannot uh, yet believe that are you trying to so it's a one in 12 chance versus i don't rolling a 12 <laughs> rolling a two I, is much less likely than rolling look, a, i've already explained i took way too much podcast okay. medication today okay okay let me just say i've one, got half one, I've, yeah, let full me, half of a violet okay. crumble staring me in the fucking okay, face okay okay i'm just gonna say one more thing it is less <laughs> fucking Columbo here's, over here. here's the pre, here's the question <laughs> Here's, like the, here's, the, 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 here's the assertion. <laughs> I'm about to. I'm about He's to admit to my crimes, even though you don't have any evidence. Here's the. Here's the. Here's the assertion. I got it. That it is mo- less likely that you will roll a two on two d sixes than it is you will roll a two on one d twelve. I got it. That's all I'm saying. And all I'm saying is that sounds cool. It's self-evident. I, I, I no, it, it, I don't agree that it's self-evident in <laughs> well, my it, context. It's, it's self-evident in your. You have enough mathematical lo- knowledge. No, it's in just your one case in twelve say, versus rolling two ones. All right, I prov- I require for my own. Brain. I can't believe this is even a question. Okay, all right, okay, all right. I'm cool with that. Any odds and ends about the, any additional odds and ends about this episode of fucking Star Trek. <laughs> Lower Decks. It's a really good show. <laughs> it's a really good show. They put so much effort into it. <laughs> we're talking about some nonsense. Not nonsense. The interface to existence yeah. is what we're talking about. Uh, um, there's a ahead. there's like more of like the whole thing like where they, the the Lower Decks quarters is just like in the hallway and you saw like like Tendy was just in a towel. And she was all like, folding her other and, towel like yeah. all like nicely. Like and that's just like they're just out in the open. It's like cool. They, it's they, like Starship Troopers. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they, remember they take the sonic showers together. Well, that's true too, but it's just weird that, like, I mean, they already the live hi- in a the hall. High, the higher ups get their own yeah. quarters. Yeah. Right, they get a hallway. I like it. I like the presentation where nobody's like, but it's funny, hooting yeah, and hollering about it. Like, like Boimler isn't being all like, oh, uh, 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 yeah, right, like, yeah, because yeah. on another shit, pro- they're a, professionals. It's not that t- they're, they're like Larry King. They are professional. In, in another style show, the character of Boimler would be all like uncomfortable by yeah, it or, or something or hiding behind his pad or something right. which he would do in other in, he would do that in other scenarios mm-hmm. um i i actually thought it was a cogent point that uh the ferengi martok uh, made when he said at the end <laughs> to boimler he says the only way you can lose now is by letting your foe define who you are yeah i thought yeah. that was that was it pretty was good awesome advice. that it was that was solid advice and then the classic klingon but also very I good find advice that that's good I, I i never let that happen yeah that's good <laughs> <laughs> I think Jesse's threatening you, Dan. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, that's just why I, he's sipping on his whiskey paused. over there. And yeah. Uh, um, then he says, "Never back down, never cower." Which there's, I, I guess, uh, ex- exceptions, but never cower. Sure, that's a good one. Sometimes you got to back down, but you know, I know what he's getting. The point but, he's but making. But you're not going to define me. Yeah, don't define me. Don't tell me how to be. That's what I say. <laughs> don't tell me how to be. I have heard you say that on more than one occasion. I do actually say that. <laughs> you used to say that a lot. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. I think I've covered most of the things. I, I the citations are like need some stellar navigation. Oh yeah. See that yeah, there's oh, just yeah. too much because yeah. that was that was a great one too. Um, the, the line about um, he ripped your arm off and he, yeah. he beat yeah. you to death with your hand, which is um, by your own hand, which is technically um a dishonorable death. Yeah, because yeah. you died by your own hands or whatever. And all of that humor works. That was funny because it makes sense for Klingons. Good right? old Klingon stuff. That's man. that's part of what's so excellent about this show is that the the writers know enough about the lore to uh not only present a cool story but 
present a story that makes sense with mm-hmm. all the characters, even the fictional Klingon Martok, you know, characters, all of that stuff. It works really great. Um, Ransom at first was all indignant about like, no, they're not space elevators. They're orbital lift, lifts yeah. or whatever. But then later on, he's like the space, ele- I mean, orbital yeah. lifts. Yeah. And at, by the end, he's just calling it uh, space elevators. Yeah. <laughs> kind of dude. Um, there's a, there's a, a, a there's a, sp- there's a Voyager episode, I think that has a, I can't remember which one it was, but I vaguely oh, remember sure. there was one where they had a similar setup. I love, couldn't transport I love the idea of space elevators it's so cool yeah. it seems so impractical but it's like some awesome. carbon nanofibers carbon nanofibers um i because that's a long way down man it's a long way how long down. how long is it's that been a long elevator road. ride how long is this elevator ride to and if the that ground shit snaps and fell then, then that's yeah, the the elevators, lift, they, they, they got the brakes i'm sure i'm sure it's you fine. could go to hell <laughs> um <laughs> 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 The uh, they <laughs> Ransom was talking about um, don't misalign the dampeners, and I realized, dampeners. I realized in season one, episode five, Cupid's errant arrow, Rutherford says something about Rutherford, Ruth, sorry, Rutherford, Rutherford, Rokeford <laughs> says something about inertial dampers. Yeah, everyone, else, but everywhere else in in um, lower decks is dampeners. So I'm thinking that dampers only applies to inertial things. I think that's the what we can conclude. I think the debate rages on I because think, the, I think I think in other Star Trek, um, you've seen yeah, those. I'm still. You see inertial uh, dampeners? In, I think so. Yeah. 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 Uh, but do they ever say like... Jesus. Did, <laughs> <laughs> would they ever say damper in a different situation? It seems like the only one that loses out is damp dampers. I don't, I don't know. They say dampener in place of damper, but we they don't say do damper proper, in place of dampener. We have to do a research project. Scan all the... Uh, scan all. <laughs> do a textual analysis. Take scan all. <laughs> scan it all into the, the into Got the a database. problem with data? Take scan all. <laughs> Wait, what about? If Why you do you have a problem, problem with, with data? You have a problem with lore? You got a problem with Jordy? Man. You are you a data hoarder? Do you need somewhere to put all your data? Get you scan mean, all. You, what was that? Kivas Faho was that the guy who was who was hoarding data? Oh, the, he was the collector, c- collector guy. guy. Oh, the, oh, right. Okay. Uh, nachos. We're all, again. Oh we yeah, see, with we guacamole. See, yeah, walking around with nachos. California one of the class. waiters. Lots of nachos. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. California class oh, gets the guacamole. Oh, there was that other ship, the Inglewood, which is another place in California. That is up to place. no good, from what I hear. Yeah. Uh, all right. <laughs> Anything else? That's what Dr. Dre said. I'm staying away from that. <laughs> Dr. Dre said it. <laughs> yeah. It's always up to For real. Dude. <laughs> I didn't say that. I'm just going based on what I heard. <laughs> okay. Um, anything else? But I don't know from experience. The Sequoia was back in there. The Sequoia oh, still yeah. hanging out back in there where they're hanging out all the time. The Sequoia shuttle in the background. Tons of other stuff. The Klingon weapons they each had were all from previous series. I don't know. I don't know what else to say. It's a great, great fun yeah. episode. Pretty funny stuff. The animation was really good on the on Cranch. Yeah. I really liked him. Like, like he looked really monstrous and beastie. Yeah, he was a beastie real. boy. <laughs> Sabotage. 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 <laughs> Sabotage. <laughs> okay. Well, it sounds like to me, it sounds like there's nothing else. Sounds that we like have the to end say. of the podcast. The end of the podcast, so we can do all An the hour and twenty minutes. The regular bits. One of the regular bits is um, how to contact us. Do of course feedback at discussstartrek.com. The usual. Way. If you want to write one of them old fashioned emails, but make sure if you're writing us an old fashioned email, you got to have one a uh, uh, email signature like you had in the eighties mm-hmm. and nineties. You got to have an email signature. signature. It's got to be some sort of quote from. Uh, uh, a novel you like, or an, or an astronomer, or some shit, mm-hmm. some philosopher. That, that's the it Star Trek inspirational. way. Maybe you know Lao Tzu or something like that. Mm-hmm. And you got to have a bunch of like asterisks and shit involved mm-hmm. to to make it clear that and you, you know you need to practice your netiquette. I had a I had, I had a, a teacher once tell me that they, I needed to work on my netiquette because I didn't put my name at the end of my <laughs> my my email, and I was just like, you know who I am. She's like, she's like, you need to practice your netiquette. <laughs> I, I was always, like, what? I not only do I always sign my emails, I always sign uh, my emails patrick uh even when my full email signature with all my information it sounds like something some teacher would say like a netiquette yeah i made that up well she just made that up that's the thing is i usually tag my name at the end of emails but sometimes i don't if there's been like if i'm if there's been like like if i was going to send one of you guys an email which is a weird thing to do i'd only do that if i was sharing you a link or something but (laughs) but like i wouldn't send it on like whatsapp or text or something yeah well anyways if i sent someone like you guys an email or or something I'd be nervous if you send me an email. If, I got, <laughs> if you, getting an email from either Dan or Jesse would be similar to like getting a phone yeah, call I was just from thinking, one of them. Yeah, I was oh, call what you happened? Oh yeah. no! Yeah. Oh no! What's happened? But with one of you guys, I wouldn't put my signature. I wouldn't tag my name at the end. I only do it for 
basic communication, but this is my teacher. And I don't know. Back then, I thought we All were. Right, any, okay. I don't know. Audience members who wish to contact us, please just proper signature, you know, old fashioned signature. Yeah. Or else I'll get you on your netiquette. Yeah, I don't know. Social. <laughs> it's one of those words that they took on the internet when they netiquette. made a real word and added a couple yeah. internet word letters to it and made it what like a, a silly word. Social, social, uh, Sounds social. Sounds like Connecticut. Social networking. It's not. It's not, but it sounds so like. on. Uh, you can get us at 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 symbol. It's got Star at Trek on Twitter, Twitter, Instagram. What's the on symbol? Truth Social. You said at Twitter on Instagram. <laughs> truth Social. <laughs> you missed my joke, Dan. You were trying to make a joke. You missed my. Oh, truth I'm sorry. Social joke. I'm sorry. It's okay. I fucked. Walked not, all over, I walked all over your joke. Not, I feel bad. We're not currently on Truth Social, but we Who are on, on Twitter and What's Instagram. What's Truth Social? That's Trump's uh, whole business. His old cop, his clone of Twitter. Is that oh. thing still around? Is I wouldn't it? have gone. Kind of. It's a whole other. Thing. Sorry, I re- I'm really. Spe- I feel bad that I walked on your joke. It, I, no, I it's okay. To. What it's was that okay. thing called? Parlor. I'll try harder next time. Yeah, Parlor was the one that collapsed yeah, because of all the yeah. racists Collapse and terrorists. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, so I did the social media, YouTube, Facebook, which is also social media, YouTube, uh, Reddit. We do. We don't. There's not much going on there, but if you want there to be something going on there, Reddit. it's it's, a, it's actually slash r slash it's got everything Reddit. because it's supposed to cover all our podcasts currently we hate just have the one <laughs> so, you said the, hate but in the future you said hate at first that was a freudian slip hate you said because we Did i say hate you said we hate have only one that's what you said we hate our play back podcast. the tape i'll i'll listen to it when, when you I'm hate would you consider video. youtube a, a, a so, social media eh, socialish it's not as social as Social-ish. tiktok i i don't use it as social media i use it as a place to watch videos yeah, but then people, some people like to do live videos or live video watching. Yeah. There's all chatting. That's true. People are all mean I'm to each other it, in the I'm, chat. Everything's right. flexible, man. No, I know about the chat, but I wouldn't considering about the live stream stuff. I'm old. I'm like I'm like an old fogey, I guess. Because I watch YouTube, like bit, not like yeah. that. Yeah. Anyway, you I'm can find us. You can find us there. Lots of people listen to us on YouTube. You might be listening to us on YouTube right, right now. now. Oh, right now, not literally, because right now there's no way you could be listening to. It's literally. It hasn't been literally. released yet. That way, <laughs> Lit- literally. Uh, but okay, so that does it for all the communication it does it. stuff. It does it for real? Uh, uh, I've de- had enough. <laughs> <laughs> definitely uh again reminder go check out uh, green shirt podcast you should check out every episode but if you uh, need some particular enticement and for some reason this might qualify if you'd like to hear me on that podcast in the context of a different podcast which, totally do that. which might be interesting for all sorts of reasons you can listen to the episode on the next phase which just was released the other day mm. so go check it out otherwise the next phase wasn't released the other day the podcast I think that was implicit from the context of my statement. Well, I mean, I don't know. We need evidence because no, just like my my assertion about uh, stati- by statistics and double single die versus double die, we need double we die. need we need a paper apparently written on it. And that is a fair point that I why fully you, agree with. And I encourage double double I encourage that sort of inquiry. You're just doing it to be doing it. I fully am sincerely you're, in favor. You're doing it on purpose. I have a podcast called the next <laughs> the next phage, and it could be about eating stuff. Phage, yeah, like oh. phagia. I thought you meant like that uh, that episode of Voyager where they had like giant viruses <laughs> floating around mm. the ship, yeah. and Janeway was shooting them with a she was shooting them with like a big old phaser rifle, and her sleeves were all she was wearing. That sounds like a off that sounds like a fun uh, funny fun fun video game. Yeah, it, it yeah, yeah it's an okay episode. But the right. video game next week, of course, next shit. week we will be discussing it would be augmented reality. The third episode of Star Trek Lower Deck season three. I the don't happen to know the name of the episode. I don't know if they've released it yet or not. But uh, the whatever the third episode is, that's the one we'll be talking about. about. It's going to be called. It's going to be called Clips or Claps. Maybe it's the crossover episode. Why don't you roll a couple of D6s and uh, mm. see- A couple of Ds and I don't know. Oh. I don't, <laughs> that doesn't really work, does it? All right. That will do it for us this evening. And until next week, what do we say to our audience, Dan? What do we say? <laughs> until next time. <laughs> Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay. 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 <laughs> you know, that works for me. <laughs> Good night. Bye-bye. <laughs> You eat breakfast and gain plus free stamina!